I know many photographers really want to take photos of people. Now, this could be any kind of situation. We could be talking about at a wedding, posing people at a wedding. It could be your niece has said, I really want to do some modeling, Uncle Mikey. Can you take some pictures of me? But the key is you, you, you've got to know how to get someone to stand, how to pose. Now, I would assert that one way of doing that is to spend some money on a professional model who really knows what they're doing. You've got to be really straight up with them and tell them what it is that you're doing. You want them to teach you something and then hire them to do that. Now, sitting with me here is the lovely Steph Fabello, who has been a professional model for a very long time. And, you know, you've been publishing all sorts of things and done all sorts of shoots, haven't you? Yeah. And I mean, do you think that hiring a professional model could help someone learn stuff? Um, massively. Um, first off, um, hiring someone who knows how to pose is massively beneficial because if, if you're photographing your niece, she's just going to stand there expressionless. Mm. Maybe she might do a cheesy smile. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you hire... The pout. Yeah, the, the duck face, as they call it. Uh, whereas if you hire a model, modelling and acting are quite similar. A model can display an emotion and that's one of the massively beneficial things about hiring a professional model is they can create almost any vision that you have mm, within I know. reason. It's amazing. I often find it amazing watching you guys when you work and a photographer just says, give me moody. Yeah. Be sad. Yeah. Be happy. Laugh. You know, whereas like with your niece or your nephew or something like that, you've actually got to create that emotion in the person. Yeah. But also I'm thinking about body shapes, angles, you know. It's like, so the old cheesy 1960s, 70s thing yeah. like this, which personally I think looks so dreadful and hideously <laughs> dated. But subtleties of where your feet are, where your legs are, where your hands are, things yeah. like that. It, being aware of the lighting as well, knowing which direction you're facing, especially in a studio environment, if you've got two lights up, knowing which one's your main light and knowing which light to pose towards. Whereas if you were photographing a family member or a friend, they, they wouldn't have a clue what they're doing. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, there's another benefit of hiring a professional model. As you just said, you know what the light's doing. You, you would be in a position to be able to say, um, you do realise that right now I've got a big black shadow because the light's coming from there. Yeah. Because someone who's learning is going to be lost in, oh, have I got the right, have I got my camera, da, 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 da. Yeah. And you can sort of help with that. I mean, I haven't done a huge amount of posing people. I did, I did a kind of boudoir shoot, actually, for my um, bookkeeper, which sounds kind of odd, but um, <laughs> I did. You know, and I said I'd do it for nothing because I don't work in that world. I, I've done very little of it. Would you be prepared to, I don't know, just teach me a few things yeah. that work? Just, let's go through some shapes and some things because... I love working with a professional model. It's rare I ever do it because, <laughs> yeah, I just didn't get that opportunity. Yeah, that'd yeah? be cool. Okay, let's, I'm going to go and grab a camera. There's a camera, <laughs> but I do need to go and get a battery in it because I let it go flat. So let's go grab a camera and yep. we'll, we'll do some stuff in cool. the tip. What fun. <laughs> Where are we going to go then, Steph? What are we going to do? Okay, well, because we're going to focus on shapes, we're not too worried about the background right now. We worry about things like that later on when we're actually creating an image. Whereas right now, we're looking at what you can get out of me. So uh, we're going to start off with some full-length shots, maybe then do some three-quarters and then some portraits. And I will show you how to get the most out of me. Awesome. That's really cool. I'm loving this. All right, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so what, okay, where would we go? Where do you want to go? Do you want to work from here on the grass or what? Um, I suppose we'll take a step onto the grass okay. a bit. Something as well. I mean, I am cheating a little bit, viewers, because I'm using a super wide um, aperture 1.7 lens here with a fancy electric thing so I can shoot in this light because I am going to lose the background for you. So you can really, really see what Steph is showing me and how we're going to do things. Okay, Steph, so I'm going to go for a full lens shot. Yeah. Um, right, teach me shit. Okay, well one of the things that I see in a lot of amateur models um, where they make a big mistake is their hands. And I mean, I used to do it when I started off. It's, it's tense hands or fists or, you know, that, that doesn't look very good. So, relaxed hands, I call them Spock fingers. Okay. So, hands and arms need to be nice and loose first off. So, arms are ready. Legs, I'm gonna show a little bit of my heel and stick my hip out ever so slightly, not too much, otherwise we're verging on glamour instead of fashion. And that would be the first shot, okay, which is quite casual, yeah. quite relaxed. Yeah, and looking at the way you've positioned your foot, your toes, your, your wrist, etc. 
these are all things that you guys can study. And if you've got a model who's showing you this stuff, it's gold, you know? And also, as you notice, I'm showing the side of my hand opposed to the back of my hand because that scene is quite a masculine thing to gotcha. show the back of your hand. So it's gotcha. more ladylike and feminine yeah. to show the sides of your hands. This bit was really swan like. <laughs> that was Took cool. a lot of practice in that a mirror. That was cool, didn't it? <laughs> OK. OK, so let's have a look. Let's go for a full length shot. I'm going to move back a bit because I've got a fixed focal length. Here we go. We've got a full length shot. I'm going to come. I am going to come around this way a bit because I want to hide that nasty thing behind you. Get you in focus if I can. Perfect. I mean that is a lovely looking sort of a shape that we've got going on in that picture. That's quite sweet. Yeah. It's quite sweet. It's a nice little sort of thing. I mean, ignore the house and all the mess at the background. Yeah. Okay. So tell me something else. Things to watch for if you're going to ask a model to, 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 to pose like that. Well, posture's a really big one. Uh, I used to have terrible posture before I started modelling, and modelling actually helped me become... I walk more confidently, and I've got a much better posture thanks to modelling. Mm. A bad posture looks awful in pictures. So you've got to pretty much have your shoulders square or rolled back ever so slightly. And it makes you feel better. It empowers the model to be like that, you know? I, I'm damn proud to be a model. Shoulders back, it feels good, and it looks mm. better than that. Mm. Absolutely. OK, so let's have a go at another full length one. I'm going to see if I can just video through the camera. Should we go three quarter this time? Yeah. OK, I'm going to come in a bit. Now, I'm exposing Steph because here we go. We're rolling. Now, I'm exposing for Steph. The background is blowing out, but you can see from this. Steph, do the rolly shoulder forward thing a bit that you were talking forward about. Forward or back? It's cut forward. You were doing that sort of, you know, like, don't stand like this. Show us now not to stand. Yeah. Now, go into, show me what you showed me just now. Look at that. Do you see what a difference that is? Just that tiny movement. It makes a world of difference. Looking through the viewfinder, you can see it. I'm just going to switch the video off and take... Where's he gone? There he is! <laughs> <laughs> we lost you our move, cameraman. <laughs> people, you move! Right. I'm going to take the video off and just take and take that image. So that's really looking cool. Nice one. OK. Now, something I notice as well doing this with Steph is that almost every time the camera goes click, Steph moves. Just a little movement. And this is like the mark of a seriously experienced model because you just know, don't you, there's a click. It, it depends what the photographer's looking for. Sometimes the pose is right but the head position or the facial expression isn't. So sometimes I will change everything, my facial expression, where my head is and where my body is, or I will just tweak one small part of that, or maybe just my hands or just my feet. Mm. So, yeah, try to mix it up a little bit, but not too much. Let's do that. Can, can we just do that, just show people what that looks like? So, I mean, if I just set you up here... Now, something you do need to, to, to watch for, guys and girls who are watching this video, Many experienced models will also say, now be careful with this because the sun's coming from here, but it's still your job as a photographer just to keep an eye on these things. Don't get totally lost in one thing. Uh, okay, so if I was to take that shot, that's really nice. But look, there's a really there's a strong highlight around Steph's eye. That's better. You see what I mean? You still have to watch these things. Now, if I take the same picture again, we've got a much nicer light on Steph's face. Now, Steph, look at that, you see, she's immediately changed her head. We've got a different look there. And a different look there. Can you see from that how that little sequence of pictures, how invaluable this is? You need to study this. You need to think of this as an experiment, as a lesson. I'm going to share a little thing with you. Years ago, when I started um, in photography, I totally blagged my way into photographing a Marks and Spencer's fashion shoot. Don't tell them, <laughs> right? But I had no idea what I was doing, but I managed to get into it, and I did it, and I shot it, and everybody was happy. Rock and roll. But one of the things I really got was I was talking to some of the models there, and I just said, look, I'm learning. I told them the truth about what I'm trying to do. I said, would any of you like to come out with me? Will you teach me this stuff? Will you teach yeah. me how to show people how to stand and what to do? And exchange, and if, if any of you want some pictures, of course you can have them, but you know. And I think the key is being authentic, because yeah. a couple of the girls, Tanya in particular, Tanya Hescroft, if you're watching this, Tanya Hescroft, I haven't seen you for many years, <laughs> it'd be brilliant to call me. Um, 
Tanya Hescroft, she took me out and we did a few shoots together. I learned so much from her, I can't tell you. Yeah. Just on how to stand, how to hold a head and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Should we do another one? Yeah. Let's, okay, talk, teach me something else. Okay, well, another thing that a lot of newer models make the mistake of is, is hands-on face, which sometimes looks a bit bizarre. It's kind of cheesy. It's a bit 1960s, yeah. isn't it? That and the whole hands behind head, like you said earlier, it doesn't really work. I'm going to just roll the video camera. Will you show me, like, so we're going to do a little bit of how not to do it. Now, if you just go into kind of what you think will work. What will work yeah, from this. Yeah. Look at that. Can you see what a subtle movement that is? Go back to the one that doesn't. Yeah. And again to the one that does. Somehow there's something more sort of, I don't know what it is, languorous, I don't know what the word is, I'm not really good at that, but it is a whole world of difference. Okay, so I'm just going to kill that video, and kill that video if I can, and shoot the picture. Let's have a go. Here we go, that's looking good. Awesome. Got it. Sorry, right, teach me another thing. Another thing. I'm enjoying this. Where's he gone? Here he is. I'm enjoying this. Well, as I said, hands-on face can be a right pain. And a lot of models don't appreciate when they're being booked by a photographer and a makeup artist, putting their hands on the face ruins the makeup, which is just a, a right pain. So if I am doing any poses where I touch my face, I don't actually really touch my face ever so slightly fingertips because that doesn't look good you know you no, can see doesn't. where i'm actually you pressing on the skin absolutely see i tell you what why don't we just look through here and see if we can see that so if i do a shot right we've got you touching now haven't we okay and now let's do the caressing the light it's not actually making a dimple no. in your cheek in the second shot, is it? And, and the issue with that is it smears the makeup. And a lot of work goes into makeup. I mean, I've sat in makeup for three hours sometimes before I've even got into the studio and got the shots. It doesn't make the makeup artist very happy and the photographer's not happy when he has to go into Photoshop later and Absolutely. fix it all. Absolutely. Come on then, one more. Give me another lesson. I'm enjoying it. I really love working here. <laughs> this is fun. Steph's boyfriend is on camera here. We've got um, the awesome Dave Kai Piper, fashion photographer extraordinaire, who's doing the video in. And he keeps moving around, so I don't know where he's gone, people. <laughs> right, OK. Give me another lesson. Um, well, as I don't have the most fabulous figure, which I'm quite happy with, um, I... Oh, dear, here we go. Um, I accentuate my figure by moving my hips accordingly and same with my shoulders. So, again, just standing normally, there's not much, but I can twist my body appropriately to make myself look more feminine. Mm -hmm. It depends on the type of shot you're doing. It works really well with lingerie, because, you know, you need to be more feminine for lingerie and boudoir. It's what the whole shoot is about. Whereas um, with fashion, it doesn't always look good if you're really poking your hip out like that. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And, um, I mean, I guess... Here we go, so just do the, the, okay, so we've got, there we go, we've got Steph, and need to change the exposure, sorry about this, guys. It's a little bit bright. Here we go, that's better. Okay, so like you've really given yourself a hip and sticking your bum right out yeah. to the side there. Got you. So there's one kind of a look. Show me another, can you demonstrate something else? You see, now that's a really, really nice shape, isn't it? And it's what makes a great picture. But it's knowing how much is too much. Yeah, absolutely. Because some would say that this is very kind of stereotypical glamour. Whereas it's just having the very subtle hint. Yeah. Now I noticed looking through here that your dress is absolutely smooth and flat. Yeah, because otherwise it's a nightmare in Photoshop. If there's creases in it, and especially if you're shooting fashion, you know, you're focusing on the clothing. So the clothing has to be perfect. If there's creases in it and you've got to edit it in Photoshop, you're not going to be very happy with me after. No, I totally get it. I totally get it. And these are things that the photographer, as you become more experienced, you can learn to look for. But if you can get the guidance of someone like Steph, 
it's gold. It's absolute gold. You know, have a conversation with your model. Don't be shy. Um, whether you're a male photographer or a female photographer, it doesn't matter. Don't be shy. And also, I think the most important thing is you've got to be completely authentic. Yeah. Well, everybody knows if someone is jerking someone around. Now, guys, I know, okay, we want to be like, I'm in control, I've got my camera, I'm a photographer. But look, we've all got to learn stuff and begin somewhere. Yeah. And I don't think anyone anywhere is ever going to go, don't be so stupid. If you just say, look, I'm learning this stuff and I really want to know how do I do this, how do I do that. The other thing I want to briefly touch on as well is as you become more confident, it can be very easy to get lost in the photography that you're doing and to do things like, let's say, Steph's hair is blowing across her face, just to stick your hand out and start going like that. <laughs> now, don't touch the model. Don't touch the model. <laughs> it's absolutely okay once you've built a rapport with the model and you can sort of say, Steph, do you mind if I move your hair if it goes in your face? Mm -hmm. And then Steph can say yes or no. You know, but don't just wade in. Remember, you've got another human being here who is a professional person. So, Steph, thank you so much for doing that. You're very welcome. That was brilliant. You're brilliant on camera. <laughs> Isn't she good, Dave? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's gold dust. So, you know, but again, don't just go and hire the pretty girl from down the street or the good looking young guy who lives next door. Don't just say, hey, I'll buy you a curry or give you some beer if you'll come and do this. It's the experience, it's the yeah. years of experience Steph has had working with people like Dave and with other photographers in all sorts of walks of life and realms that has given you the knowledge. Yeah. And it's invaluable. So guys, reverse engineer it a bit. And reverse engineer it a bit. Let the model tell you what to do, but tell the model that you want them to do that. And I think it'd be great. Yeah. Thanks, Steph. You're very welcome. That's brilliant. <laughs> so we're gonna have a beer and let Dave put the cameras away. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.